For generations, astronomers had meticulously studied the skies to establish our place in the cosmos. But even the greatest minds failed to comprehend what was right in front of their eyes. That is, until one night in October 1923, when the American astronomer Edwin Hubble made a discovery that radically altered our perception of the world on a scale never before and never again seen in the history of humanity. That night, Hubble got the first glimpse at the universe as it truly is. At the onset of the last century, Earth's place in the cosmos was well established. It was clear the Earth is the third planet out of eight in the solar system, but it was also clear that the solar system itself is part of a much larger structure called galaxy, a term which derives from Greek and freely translates to the Milky One, thus referencing the milky smear visible on the night sky and which in reality consists out of billions and billions of stars. A question hardly debated at the time was whether the galaxy was all there is. Especially the role of nebulas, which could be spotted all over the night sky, was speculated on. While the majority of astronomers believed them to be nearby clouds of gas within the galaxy, a small number suggested that they might be what they called distant island universes similar to our Milky Way. In other words, independent galaxies. To settle the question, it would be necessary to measure the distance of the nebulas to Earth and then compare them with the size of the galaxy. But here lies the problem. How can we measure the distance of any celestial body from our fixed point of view here on Earth? The easiest way of doing it is by measuring something called parallax. Parallax is what can be seen if an object is viewed from two different vantage points like for example the left and the right eye. If we hold an object close to our face and then look at it alternatingly through the left and the right eye, we will see that the position of the object appears to jump. The jump is larger if the object is closer to our eyes and it is smaller if the object is further away. Thus, by measuring the size of the perceived jump, we have found a measure for the distance of the object from our eyes. Exactly the same idea can be applied to stars. Obviously, our eyes are far too close together to make it work on such distances, so we have to use a trick. We first observe the position of a star and then wait for six months to record its position once again. In the meantime, the Earth has moved to the other side of the Sun, some 300 million kilometers away thereby providing us with a different vantage point that takes the role of the second eye. Unfortunately, this only works for nearby stars with a distance of up to about 400 light years, roughly the size of the circle. For stars further away, the parallax is too small to be measured. Astronomers knew of a second, more indirect way of measuring the distance of a star, by observing its brightness. The further away a star is from us, the dimmer it will appear on our night sky. Of course, we also need to know its actual brightness, otherwise we cannot distinguish whether a star is dim yet very close to us, or whether it's far far away but very bright. But once we know the actual brightness of a star, the brightness with which it should appear, we can compare it with the brightness we observe here on Earth and calculate the distance from it. All of this was very well known to the young American astronomer Edwin Hubble. Born in 1889, the young Edwin did not have much science on his mind and was rather capitalizing on his athletic talents. After a brief detour into jurisprudence, he found his passion for physics and earned his PhD in astronomy. Upon finishing his thesis, he was offered a job at one of the most prestigious institutions in the field 
the Mount Wilson Observatory in California. Bad luck had it that the offer came in April 1917 and Edwin had to decline. He had volunteered for the army and was off to the war. After having been stationed in France without ever seeing combat action, he returned in the summer of 1919 and was again offered a position at Mount Wilson. This time though, he accepted and remained a member of the staff until his untimely death in 1953. At Mount Wilson, Hubble had access to the 2.5 meter Hooker telescope, the largest available telescope at the time. In the night of October 5th to 6th, 1925, he studied photographic plates made of the Andromeda Nebula, when he noticed three unusually bright objects within the nebula. He immediately identified them as supernovae. A supernova is the spectacular death of a massive star which has burned up all its nuclear fuel and collapses in on itself igniting a cataclysmic explosion that tremendously increases the star's brightness. Accordingly, Hubble labeled the three bright spots with the letter N for Novae. Looking back at old photographs of Andromeda, he noticed one Nova to be absent on an old picture, but showing up again on an even older one. Excitedly, Hubble crossed out the N with a red marker and instead labeled the bright spot VAR. What he was looking at wasn't a supernova at all, but a rare type of star called a Cepheid variable. Cepheids are remarkable stars, which pulsate in diameter, temperature and brightness. The time between different phases of variation is called period and stays constant. In 1912, Henrietta Swan Leavitt had analyzed Cepheid stars and discovered a curious yet incredibly handy characteristic. She found that the period of variation is directly linked to the maximum actual brightness of the star. Now we can understand Hubble's excitement. Measuring the period of the Cepheid tells us exactly what we wanted to know, its actual brightness. And comparing the actual with the observed brightness tells us the distance to Earth. By finding the variable star, Hubble had found a way to determine the distance of the Andromeda Nebula. If Andromeda was inside the galaxy, it could not be further away than a few 10,000 light years. But when Hubble did the calculation, he arrived at a staggering value of over a million light years. This left only one conclusion. Neither is Andromeda a nebula, nor located within the galaxy. It is a new galaxy in its own right, vastly separated from our own. Very few single observations have so dramatically changed our view of the cosmos and our own place in it, as Hubble's discovery of galaxies outside our own has. What has been a limited space just on a previous night, suddenly became a home to an incomprehensible number of stars in billions and billions of galaxies clustered all across the universe. For the first time, humanity got a glimpse at the true vastness of the cosmos, a first peek into the enormity of the unexplored reaches of the beyond. Less than 400 years after the Copernican Revolution removed Earth from the center of creation, the same fate befell our own galaxy. The Milky Way, though our home, is neither unique nor special, but only one out of a truly countless number of other galaxies. The legacy of Hubble's discovery was carried on even after his death, very fittingly by the space telescope that bears his name. In 1995, scientists pointed the Hubble Space Telescope to a tiny yet completely dark region of the sky. For 10 days, the telescope took long exposure images of the dark region, risking to record nothing but blackness. When they finally looked at the pictures, this is what Hubble saw. Every visible spot is a galaxy containing tens or hundreds of billions of stars. Hubble has shown we are but one species on a planet orbiting one out of a countless number of stars in one of an unfathomable number of galaxies in what is 
our universe.